Hi, my name is Bob Chris. I was the video array operator for the first internal rec survey of the USS Arizona since 1942. This project was done in conjunction with the National Park Service as well as the National Geographic Society. The purpose of this survey was to test for the status of internal corrosion of the wreck, as well as to search for sources of oil still bubbling from the wreck since 1941. Video Ray was identified as the only piece of equipment that could safely make multiple penetrations into the very bowels of the USS Arizona, as well as to protect the archaeological integrity of the wreck site. Although it began as a pilot project, Video Ray quickly became the star of the show as everyone in the project fell in love with it and adjusted operations to accommodate its use. During all internal wreck penetrations, divers were stationed at the hull opening to tender tether and to monitor tether management. It's the everyday items of life that bring the Arizona back to life. Here you see a vanity and the only woman's head in the vessel with marine growth attached to the surface. Here we're just after the vanity inside of the woman's head, looking through the corroded wall. If you look closely, this is a tube of toothpaste inside of that cup. and of course, a toilet paper holder, again viewed through the wall. This sequence was particularly interesting because Larry Murphy and I were trying to decide whether to risk going through this door. We looked one way, we looked the other, Larry was still scratching his beard saying, I don't know, when I just went for it. I used this cabin as illustration since it was closed off from oxygen circulation due to the closed door and the closed porthole, leaving the metal and the artifacts in much better condition. Here you see the klaxon that sounded the air raid alarm as the Japanese bombers were strafing and bombing just outside. Also here is the voice tube where was heard the abandoned ship call signaling the death of the USS Arizona. Inside of the officer's quarters, there are voice-activated phones and lamps next to the desks. Here's the reading lamp on the sliding covered desk, as well as workspace for the officers to make correspondence. I turned around from the desk, flew behind the closed door, and found this in a closed closet, a fully preserved pair of uniform pants, U.S. Navy issue. At this point, the entire crew filled the control room watching. Right there is the hip pocket, as well as the spinner loops on the pants. Here we're squeezing back out of that door again and into the next cabin. As you can see, this door is actually open, causing some silt buildup on both the desks and on the cots.
Next, we're in the Admiral's stateroom, looking at the China cabinet. Although we had a full set of construction drawings, there were a few surprises during this project, one of which was this. We found a fireplace in the Admiral's cabin against the forward bulkhead. During our second expedition to the Arizona, we brought along various tools and instruments to take samples and gather data to determine the status of the wreck. Here is video ray with the Cygnus ultrasonic metal thickness gauge attached to the skid. We determined the location of the main structural bulkheads from construction diagrams and flew the probe to the wall for a reading. What you're seeing here is me trying several locations on the wall to get a clean reading. During survey operations, we noticed that there was oil and marine growth mixed together on the ceilings. So what we did was rigged up a sampling device from PVC pipe and took samples. The main video ray operational problem encountered during this project was the annoyance of tether snags. Here we have a minor snag on the table of the Admiral's cabin, which was on the easy end of the scale. We take the negatively buoyant cable for the Cygnus gauge to video ray's neutrally buoyant tether, which proceeds to get caught on everything. Here we're using the probe itself to untangle the cable from a towel holder next to the laboratory and one of the staterooms. Then, came the worst snag of all. The cable for the dissolved oxygen meter was very heavy and snaked into a groove of midship port side. It took about 30 minutes of coordination between myself and Matt Russell in the water with underwater comms to clear this one. We all collectively held our breath. The USS Arizona project was the most incredible operation for which I've ever been involved. The sanctity of this site in the American consciousness mixed with the emotional aspect of intruding into a gravesite, taxed all of the members of the team. At one point, I flew down the hallways with an Arizona survivor at my side narrating. For that brief moment, the ship lived once again. The controversy still rages today as to whether to take steps to preserve the wreck and harvest the oil still locked within its depths, or to let the forces of the sea Reclaim these sailors last resting place. I'd like to thank Emory Kristoff, Keith Moorhead, and the National Geographic Society, as well as Kathy Billings and the crew of the Submerged Cultural Resources Center to the National Park Service for allowing me to participate in this job. I really enjoyed working with you guys. Thanks.